Good morning, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to this lecture series of Vikram Lectures. And uh, today's uh, talk will be about our project in uh, Sudan. It's entitled Western Sudan Community Museums. We chose uh, the title for this uh, presentation as post-conflict recovery of cultural heritage because this project focuses on the areas after the conflict that took place in Sudan in the last two to three decades. So I am pleased today to welcome with us the uh, four panelists. And I'd like to start with Dr. Iglal Al-Malik, who is our council member for ICRAM, but also the director of uh, conservation of cultural heritage in Sudan of the National Cooperation of um, Antiquities and Museums. Also, I'd like to welcome Ms. Amani Al-Bashir, who is the director of the Shikan Museum uh, in the Kurdufan uh, state. And uh, we are very delighted to have worked with Ms. Amani, who led the community work in particular with her successful story that she will tell you more about during this uh, session. So again, Amani works with INCAM, which is the National Corporation of Antiquities and Museums in Sudan. Next, I'd like to welcome also our, uh, our colleagues from Melanson's Architects, Helen and Michael Melanson, who have been working with us during throughout this project since the beginning and have managed the uh, project with us uh, successfully. So you will listen to them later on during the presentation. And finally, last but not least, I'd like to also welcome my colleague, architect Anwar Sabek, who is the manager of planning and field projects at uh, the ICROM office in Sharjah. Thank you all for being with us today. And um, thank you for the attendees who have uh, managed to uh, join us at this uh, presentation. I'd like, first of all, to welcome uh, everyone to uh, another Ikram lecture series. And as I mentioned, the one of today is entitled Western Sudan Community Museums. And it's a project that uh, we run in the past year uh, and a bit more, and it will present the achievements of uh, the project that addressed the subject of post-conflict recovery in living of living cultural heritage in its tangible and intangible forms. This project was a submission we made to the Sudanese with the Sudanese government to the British Council's Cultural Protection Fund. It started in September 2018 and, um, and concluded in February 2020. We have since won funding for a rollover phase, which is about to start now. The funding represented a major award of nearly a million British pounds with its recent extension that amounts to 500,000 pounds. While ICROM is the leading partner and the recipient of the fund, there are other partners um, and whom you can see here on the screen, especially INCAM, the National Corporation of Antiquities and Museums, uh, and all these partners we've had uh, with a lot of long-standing connections. The project had to be done at uh, a breakneck speed as the revolution in Sudan started when we were three months in. Due to the time constraints, we won't uh, detail here, the challenges were many that we faced. Cultural protection is not new to Sudan. Its importance uh, was boosted by the building of the Aswan High Dam and the UNESCO campaign during the 1960s to rescue the threatened monuments, if everyone recalls that time. There were a lot of ancient sites on the Nile in Northern Sudan. The National Corporation of Antiquities and Museums was founded to protect antiquities that could be found all over Sudan and built museums in each state. 
Its mission has been severely compromised by years of conflict and economic sanctions. However, some archaeological work was able to continue, particularly on sites associated with the Nile. Incomes museums, however, have had no investment in buildings, collections, or staff for decades. So the question was where to start. We selected three museums on the west-east axis of Sudan. This is a region of the plain region of uh, the Sudan that you see here on the screen, a pan-African climate zone. Like the Nile region, the Western Corridor has physical characteristics that underpin layers of culture. There is a shared history with distinctive cultures which were threatened. This Google map shows the location of three museums within the Plain Regions Corridor. It crosses the whole of Africa. Historically and today, the region is very vulnerable to climate stresses. The current drought and the 1984 famine in Darfur were triggers in the outbreak of civil war. The effects on the populations of Darfur and Sudan have been devastating. Millions of people have been displaced and their culture fragmented. International efforts to help have focused on peacekeeping and humanitarian support. Civic institutions like museums that can help protect culture have also a major role to play. So the project's three museums represent three significant eras. They each tell part of the story of Western Sudan. The Khalifa House in Umdurman on the opposite river bank of Khartoum is a product of the Mahdi uprising in the late 19th century, and its history is important to the emergence of Sudan as an independent state. The Shikan Museum in Al Ubaid, an old Ottoman town, commemorates the first Mahdi victory on the battlefield. The museum was built in the era of optimism about the future following the independence of Sudan in 1956. Queen Elizabeth visited Al Ubaid in 1965. The Darfur Museum is, the third, is, in, uh, uh, is in the 1930s new town of Niala, built as the British administration center and the museum itself was built as part of the 2006 peace process. It closed shortly after it was opened in 2008, and it has been reopened under this project. The collections housed in the three museums have strong parallels as part of Income's mission. They are both national and regional museums, and the collections reflect this. There are three types of collections and each museum has its own mix. The Khalifa House collections include the buildings as well as artifacts from the Mahdi period and the construction of Umdurman. The Shikan Museum has one gallery dedicated to the Battle of Shikan and one gallery of ancient artifacts from sites in the Nile region. The Darfur Museum is the largest and has a similar archeological collection. It also has a gallery of photographs and portraits from the late 19th and 20th century. It also has folkloric objects. These were donated to the community since the museum first opened. From the outset, the project was ambitious in scope. It had to address every aspect of how the museums work as every part has to work together. These museums have been considered as institutions for people, not monuments. The project components contained workshops, training and active museum rebuilding tasks. The five projects components in themselves seen on the, side, on the slide demonstrate the purpose of the project, the making of a museum, thus creating a fit for purpose museums for people. So I hope this, intro this gives you a good introduction so that I'm able now and I'm pleased and honored to invite now the colleagues who have been leading the project and I would like to start with our uh, dear colleague, Dr. Eglal El Malik, uh, Director of Conservation of the National Corporation of Museums and Antiquities in Sudan and the ICROM Council member from Sudan. Uh, 
Dr. El Malik led the project from the Sudanese uh, side, and she uh, had worked on the conservation um, parts uh, in particular of the project, uh, and managed the whole project as well. Uh, but also she addressed management issues for the museum buildings and the collections in general. So I am pleased to introduce Dr. Iglal El Malik. Peace be upon you. This is Iqlal Malik, the manager of conservation, conservation in the in this project. Conservation was a major part of the project, both for the buildings and the collections. So these project objectives really apply to both. This was to record. The, this heritage in a better way, to have better conservation um, climates and better con conditions and to be managed in a better way. The Khalifa House was the biggest object to restore. It was falling apart from floods and termites where it was almost a ruin. Most of the roofs were falling down because of the rains. And there's also other uh, damages because of the termites for the wooden parts. The collections in the three museums were in a bad state, and especially all the organic materials they were as they were rotting. And also the display cases did little to protect these contents because there was no environmental controls nor security. The plan of restoring Al Khalifa was based on all the uh, plans and aspects of the and techniques to make the, the better the building in a better state. This plan you can see shows the extent of the main Khalifa museum, a collection of brick and mud plastered buildings with timber and mud wood uh, roofs. And as you can see, the compound had a very complex layout of enclosed and semi enclosed rooms and courtyards at different levels. We also took the restoration of the Bramble House because he wanted a community building. This, he was the first ruble of the of the place after the Mahdi reign was finished. It was built in the early 1900s. It was built with the, with the red bricks and it, was, it had many issues including the, the termite and other issues. Here it shows the, the gardening and landscaping that we did to reduce the dust getting into the buildings and we also put a new drainage system everywhere to stop the flooding and stagnation of the water. We also restored many of the, uh, out, many of the buildings outside to make them as shops and, caf and cafes and new facilities. In addition to teaching places for the kids. We ran a training workshop for architects and builders on, on how to repair the buildings and the right materials to use. There had also some bad repair works that we needed to redo. Of course, we, we did all documentation for all of these uh, restoration. And as you can see here, this is before and after restoration. There are also some pictures of during the restoration. This is a stone wall of the Khalifa house. We cleaned off the mud and refilled the, the holes in the, in, the, in the wall. We also did rebuilding for many roofs using the traditional khalja, which is uh, the, the, the 
the traditional way of protecting the mud houses and protecting mud walls. Through this work, we also knew more and, uh, and learned more about the, the building, and we in increased our understanding of the area as a whole and its history. And this map shows what has been discovered and can be used in telling the tale of the building of the or the construction of the museum. In some places we made interventions and removed later building works that are not part of the original museum. This way we restored original openings and original and revealed original structure and finishes. This is called the Shura Court, which is like a small court where the ruler or the caliphate met his counselor and made his all his big decisions. We added a traditional shade structure to keep the room cooler. The inside of the Shura court had been blocked up from the inside. We also restored or rebuilt the, the openings, but we also put a see-through glass so that when we close we close the openings with glass so it becomes visible but but it is closed and contained and could be air conditioned. We also rebuilt the roof. The conservation department helped supervise the building restoration. The other job, which is as big, was the co to conserve the collections. This started with recording and registering all these pieces and we had to start from almost from scratch. There were no trained security, nor uh, computers, nor conservation labs or materials or storage, proper storages. The conservation department helped supervise the building restoration. We started work on the recording and cataloging using hard copy forms that we then digitized later on, on computers based systems. And all the collections now, now all the collections in all three museums have been recorded and collision assist. Almost about 10,000 objects, including those that are in storage. Due to the training that we had, we now have some of the trainees became trainers themselves. It was a big team effort between the, and fruitful effort between the three museums, the staffs and the staff of the National Museum and some volunteers as well. We also had professionally photographed all of the objects in all three museums and we had the photos to match with the museum records. Now all the objects that are in storage or in display has been recorded, be it archaeological, historical or folklore. The project also provided, uh, we established a lab in, in Barambal House, a restoration lab where it started working already there to restore, to restore uh, the, the objects and we're doing the same at, uh, uh, in Khalifa and one of our goals for example in Beit Khalifa in the Khalifa house some pieces need to be restored before being exhibited and we finished 130 we finished restoration of 130 pieces we also needed to have condition assessments for all pieces before recording and storage. We used many different packing techniques and materials. And as for the Khalifa house, while the building work was going, we had to put the whole collection into storage. But first, we had to prepare a proper store, proper storage area, so we, cre we established or we constructed a storage that, that we built to, to, with, with the proper conditions and the proper area and the, we had more and more pieces 
and artifacts to put. And during the storage, we also found a huge number of guns and uh, rifles that are not that were not registered then. We already started storing them and uh, recording them. The new conservation lab is well equipped with stacks of material and tools, and the conserve con the workers here. They discovered many. They discovered many things about the objects as they are examining, like these symbols on the traditional drums, a different one for each tribe. This information can now be uh, enlisted to contribute to the exhibitions and displays. We have now quite good-sized conservation team now working with different levels of expertise, where everyone in the te in these teams are very committed and enthusiastic. It feels like the collections are coming back to life again. We also have a lot of helpful volunteers working with us, where they working on cleaning. Here in this slide, it shows that they are cleaning the guns. They are from the military museums of Sudan. That's why they are the best to do this work. People are now beginning to, re to recognize the conservation, that it is important, and there are lots of skills involved. And now this becomes part of our experience in the museum where we can engage the people around the local communities. Thank you so much for listening. Thanks uh, again to Dr. Iglal Al Malik, uh, who was, invo he was involved um, heavily in the work management of collections of. Uh, of uh, 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 work in the three museums. And as you see, these uh, museums, as mentioned before, they were neglected and now they're brought back to life. So this is actually the essence of the recovery process, really at the heart of the uh, project that we have um, worked on with our partners. Thanks again to the British Protection Fund who made it possible for the Sudanese government also to take forward this project and uh, now starting continuing the work uh, on the different uh, aspects, including training, but also including the work in uh, collections management and, uh, and also uh, conservation in general. Um, please allow me now to uh, uh, introduce the next speaker who is uh, Ms. Amani Al-Bashir, who is the director of the Shekan Museum of the National uh, Corporation for Antiquities and Museums in Sudan. Um, Ms. Amani led um, this um, uh, fantastic work actually at the Shekan Museum and it provided an example of the recovery process involving communities uh, and bringing them together. So these museums have become actually a point of um, meeting of the community uh, members in this particular area, and they were celebrating their heritage, uh, being it with the ethnographic collections and donating collections to the museum, but also celebrating it through all the uh, intangible facets of, of the cultural heritage in, in the area. Greetings, my name is Amani Bashir, director of Shakan Museum of NCAM. I'm very happy to be with you today and to participate in this lecture. Of course, we wanted to encourage the communities to, uh, to imagine what they wanted to do in the museums, not just, they, not just what they wanted to see. This was also an important question for the museum staff, a new approach. This was also a request by the British Council funding. So th there was the, uh, the traditional ways of, of managing museums, we needed to do a, a new ways of doing that. That's why we needed to find new solutions to develop the, so develop the, the, these methods. We tried to have bigger engagement from the local communities, which helped and protect our heritage because people will understand how to value it. The community museum approach was very flexible and open to discussion. In fact, we had to discuss it a lot to decide what we wanted. There are 
these are the three main points. We looked at how to make the buildings work better and be more attractive to the attractive and active. And since number two, since Sudan is very diverse country, we wanted our museums to be inclusive for everyone. And finally, sharing our cultural heritage can be can help build the peace. There are three typical groups who visit the museums, who are the the children, the school, the school children, families, students, local communities, uh, tourists, big envoys, diplomatic visitors, and so on, and researchers. All the objects in the museums are Sudanese, pure Sudanese, so they are a good place to learn about Sudanese culture. It is now a law actually, or, or it is imperative, that all school children have to visit the museum. So now all schools, so school children are the biggest, our biggest audience, but we also want them to keep coming as youth audience too. Therefore we keep, we keep working on attracting them now and later when they become young and adults, as well as more families and all other groups. So we started looking, started by looking at community facilities at the museums. We decided the importance, we discussed the importance of places to meet and socialize and how to help visitors feel comfortable so they could stay longer, how the museums could support crafts and community activities like music and dance. The plans of Khalifa House show how far the museum has expanded. The Shikan Museum, for example, it got a brand new building for, for the community, while the Darfur Museum is being reorganized and there will be also landscapes with trees to shade. Here you can see for the, in the Khalifa House, I had the abandoned two-story building called the Barambal House, adjacent to the building. It was not used for many, many years. It's been neglected and it's been chosen to become the community center. Because the Sheikha Museum did not have enough space, we rebuilt, we had to rebuild the gatehouse. It is, has now a community gallery, a cafe, a craft and media room, and a bookshop, as well as a proper toilet. The Darfur Museum is a large modern building, relatively. It has plenty of space inside and outside. It needed a lot of repair because it had been closed for 12 years. And the Darfur Museum was an inspiration because all objects in the folklore gallery were donated by the community. It was built originally as a part of the piece. Uh, movement and it is an inspiration for us to continue this piece and the museum was uh, of, as part of the peace keeping efforts in 2006 but it was been abandoned for 12 years here are two pictures of the interior the cafe of Khalifa and the community gallery in the Sheikha Museum before we won the British Council Fund we ran a workshop in Khartoum funded by Prince Claus and Ikram Sharjah to discuss the idea of the community. We ran a roughly similar community programs for each of the three museums where, where we had two community coordinators and we had community representatives to include in these, in these workshops. The Sheikha Museum had the most and the biggest workshop, so it became as a pilot for the other for the other museums. During the during the workshops, we asked, "What do you want to do with your museum? What do you want your museum to do to you?" So this was a very important thing for us to understand the reflections of the community. People came up with ideas and and questionnaires and we also ran workshops and working groups that looked in more details of the possibilities.
and the Khalifa house was the first to have a new community space where we used the shaded courtyard which used which we used for meetings and also had the cafe and the craft center which will be open soon and could be used as a pilot for other museums. It is a similar model in, all, in the other two. All the museums had good community connections already. This is partly because of the historical events they commemorate. They give strong narratives for the communities and people donate family items to the museums, historical and folklore, which is why we need to be able to conserve them and look after them properly. These pictures show some of the activities we have in the Sheikh Khan Museum. The museum also organizes events outside the museum and visits to heritage sites. The museums are natural venues for traditional community events and special occasions like the Prophet Muhammad's birthday. These really show how our heritage is still alive and they are very beautiful and joyous. The museum community activities are important because they attract media interest. The, this project is generating media interest too, coming from newspaper, from radios, and social media. At the Sheikha Museum, we run workshops to design uh, new exhibits. And there were several groups who developed different topics. We chose, for example, Kordofan weddings for our first community exhibition because also uh, family issues and family practices, daily practices of traditional uh, families and tribes. And then we compared the activities before and now. It also includes many uh, traditional pictures of uh, of Kordofan. Here you can see the Kordofan wedding preparations where there's uh, music and dancing coming with it. But also we can show new photographs of Living Kurdish too so people can can promote the peace and peaceful cultural interactions with them. Thank you so much. Thanks very much again for Miss uh, Anani Al-Bashir who uh, whose work actually uh, was really close to the community uh, of the Shikan Museum in particular and actually it illustrated a very good example of how uh, these museums brought back to life uh, and how the communities came to these museums it became their um, place their house their uh, the place they they meet the place they where they celebrate uh, their heritage and uh, and also, I remember attending uh, one of the events there. Uh, people were celebrating their food, their culture, their dance, their music, um, but also uh, volunteering with their objects to the uh, museum. Some of them were 100 years old. So it is truly, these are really community museums, museums for the community. So thanks again to Ms. Amani for this um, excellent work, which is really at the heart of uh, this project. And now I'd like to um, invite our next speakers, uh, who are uh, practically Helen Melanson, who has been the, the project co-manager of this um, uh, phase of the project, but she will continue to be together with her husband, Michael Melanson, who will continue also to manage the project with us. Uh, it is pleasure to have them uh, with us to talk about the achievements that uh, were done and their efforts in making uh, this project a great success. Michael and Helen, the floor is yours. Hello. Thank you, Dr. Zaki, for the introduction. And thank you also to Iglal and Amani for their wonderful presentations. I'd also like to take this chance to thank Dr. Abdurrahman uh, Ali, who was the director of NCAM during the time we did this project, and Dr. Hatim Al Noor, who's the new director, who is helping us so much in the new project. And not to forget also Ali Al Nabi, who's director of museums at NCAM, for her support as well, and for all her wonderful staff who helped us in this project, and all the wonderful people in Sudan who worked on this project with us, because without them, this would, of course, never have happened. 
So I'm going to uh, share now um, the screen. I hope this is visible <laughs> to everybody. Um, visible. It's here. Hang on. Share screen. Okay. So um, just to introduce our um, presentation, we're going to talk about the uh, contribution that we made towards helping NCAM and the staff in producing this wonderful project. Um, uh, we began at the beginning really to try and fulfill the aims of the British Council Protection Fund, which was to enable the Sudanese teams to find ways of carrying out the vision for their project. Uh, the management aim of the project was to assist the Sudanese communities, the museum staff, craftsmen, professionals to find a common vision and to empower them to deliver their own project. And this was achieved by finding a real outcome, outcome uh, the idea of making your own museum that motivated them to overcome all the obstacles. And I have to say that last year had a lot of obstacles. Um, so to begin with, to help the Sudanese teams to build their confidence in the process, they needed to start with the skills they had and build on these together to create their museum. Um, we first began this by assembling the, those with a background in making and management, both in buildings and also in artifact conservation, because there are wonderful skills in Sudan and we had to go and find them and, and work with the Sudanese to find what they could do to work, help build their own project. Uh, first, they had to learn what they have as materials for building their museums. And so they made surveys of then assess the collections in the museum buildings. And this increased their existing knowledge of them both in the buildings themselves with our building workshops and in our collections workshop where we studied the collections and wrote reports on them about their current conditions. Um, after that, we started building on the expertise they already had. Uh, first, to learn what they have as materials for building their museums. Secondly, by developing their craft or practical skills, using work itself as a vehicle and a discipline to achieve appropriate international standards. Uh, the damaged state of the buildings themselves was an incentive to uh, kind of motivate the whole project. Uh, secondly, by developing their craft or practical skills by using the work itself as a vehicle and the discipline to achieve appropriate international standards. Um, uh, sorry, the conservation teams also represent a variety of skills and experiences. Um, and we use those as well to help develop um, the, uh, the way the project was going to be developed. And the practical challenges of the museum collections were solved by everyone working together because not only were collections uh, unexpectedly discovered, but also they were um, uh, found in conditions which no one could even believe they were in such a poor state as they were. Um, uh, the first project was to deliver the first steps and the restoration created a motivational driver that inspired the teams to believe they could complete the entire project, a sense of self-motivation pride in seeing the project coming together. Uh, Sudanese professional expertise also allowed the conservation program to be developed into a rational process managed and directed through their own experience, supported where needed by our international experts. At the same time, the Sudanese teams were inspired to redesign their own museums. We looked for new ways by solving uh, the problems of adapting the buildings for active community use and developing their own narratives of their own exhibitions and creating civic space for peace. Um, confidence in solving problems and developing ideas was acquired on site. We looked at problems together, we discussed problems together, and the Sudanese um, professionals and builders and uh, conservators and curators all had ideas which they put forward and discussed with them, between themselves and also with their communities. And from that came up with sol problems of solving the, the issues that we faced. Um, one of the ex examples is this, uh, an, the idea of what, how, to create this new gateway for the Shikan Museum. The Amani Bashir really wanted to have a gateway that was inspired by the historical Madeira gateway, which was the first and oldest gateway, which we discovered in this project, uh, built in 1822 when the Turkish first came to Sudan. And that was an inspiration for the new museum. Um, and uh, then to build a modern building, which was required to achieve all the standards that required for modern construction, but still have a feel of the old building. And finally, we came up with the idea of using lime plaster, which had never been used in modern construction in the recent years, um, as a way of making finishing the building to have a feel similar to the old one. And this has all evolved through this process of discussion. For conservation solutions, the conservation team discussed ways of solving old problems, such as termites, with sustainable, affordable solutions. Uh, by choosing the right wood and the right plaster, lime could be used instead of expensive chemical treatments. 
but also the building teams are actively involved in finding solutions for materials techniques. Um, and they re this is a report that they finally wrote at the end of the project, explaining and justifying all the ideas that they thought through the whole project and explaining those to the new director. Uh, there are also uh, teams who are actually involved in discussing the changes to the building and the historic changes and understanding how the uh, discussion about the conservation process and the discussion about the history of buildings allow um, un to understand how to amend a building uh, without losing its authenticity and without uh, losing its functionality. And the discussions about how to create the Shura Court went through many changes, and the ideas about how to allow the building to be seen visually but still shaded, how to create the interior with a brick floor, how to create the walls with original pointing, were all discussed and, as part of the project. Um, the teams shared this sense of achievement. The building team uh, is admiring their restoration of the abandoned 1898 building, this is the photograph on the left, um, created to create the community heritage. And Niamat, as you can see, is very, very appreciative of her new store, which has made her to be the director of uh, what she now describes as her palace. Um, but not only this motivation was not only directed towards the process of uh, conserving these museums and making their own museums, but also to understanding how they could continue to work as a group. And so the teams and the building teams have succeeded, um, decided to form their own Sudan Heritage Conservation Group, which will be available and, and to bid for other projects, such as the restoration of the Sudan National Museum, but also to continue working as a team for other conservation projects in the future. At the final education workshop, members of the museum uh, conservation group actually studied all the other 14 museums around Sudan to see what those other museums that might need in the future and develop programs for them. Um, the curatorial and conservation teams built their confidence and has led that to, to the NCAM team's promotion of their own achievements to, to the new Sudan government and they earned praise from their new minister Faisal Salah, its new spoken, spokesman when they presented it to him in, in February this year and he saw it as an example of Sudanese women and men building their own future for themselves and he was very impressed by what NCAM had achieved and really inspired. He said he would immediately visit all the museums and promote them to the government. Um, so now Helen is going to go on to explain a bit about the education programs and the uh, museum uh, exhibition design programs. I mean, there's there's lots of there's you know I'm very pleased we've run the um, new funding because there's a lot more to do uh, in all the museums. But having gone through this cycle, they now have buildings that more or less work, and they've gone through the experience. But the the physical side is only half the job. So the other side, which is what Armani's um, been working on with everybody else, is um, uh, how to make the museums attractive to the community. Um, given the large number of um, proportion of the museum visitors are school children, they had to develop their approach to education. And it's very much a kind of cultural enterprise. So we had a two week uh, education program that was attended by museum staff from, and teachers from all over Sudan. They worked in groups. You need to, could you, you need to me, sorry. They worked in groups. They covered the walls in ideas which were first written, then drawn before they finally made real installations that told stories about their culture, traditional beer making, marriage customs, seasonal journeys to the Bagara. It was fantastically engaging. They also made a function here. Um, they presented their work to NCAM's director, Abdurak Mahm, the head of the British Council and the then State Minister of Culture, who even joined in singing traditional songs. And she turned up three times, she was so fascinated by the whole process. The creativity and enthusiasm of the education workshops um, was repeated in the exhibition design workshop held in Sharjah. This was attended by staff from the core teams involved and a whole gang of experts. 
Uh, they worked in groups in each, on each museum with different types of collections and the expectations of different visitor groups. And after four days of very intense work, they presented their blueprints and very compelling arguments um, for their rationale. And they're still the plans uh, that they're working to in the development of the museum exhibition now. Perhaps the most challenging and important uh, problem concern the, concerns the ethnographic collections or folklore and uh, Darfur Museum has the most here. It needs to have its own space that shows it's still living. It's not the same as the archaeology, but it's quite similar to um, a lot of the historical writings. Now, the stories here really need to come alive. Um, research is at the center of the exhibition development and there's lots of people contributing. We have material from archives around the world, as well as still living um, research, like this blacksmith in Darfur, and Sudanese historians and curators are developing all the narratives. Now we have a young uh, Sudanese design team is working on the maps and now moving on to the exhibitions. So this little process of reading the books visiting the sites and drawing the maps is what you see here. Um, so these are some of the maps that um, have been produced for the Khalifa House and Omdurman. And they really encourage people to see the heritage, not just in the museums, but all around them. Um, and they're very important to the idea of developing the museums as heritage hubs. Um, we will have maps that show different views of cultural heritage and encourage people to understand and value it. Um, sort of the important, um, so sort of filming was really our kind of starting point for um, tackling the, the living cultural heritage because they offer an immediate way to showcase living culture to communities. The communities can feel they're actually part of the museum. They can be seen in the museum. The films were made by a world-class um, museum filmmaker who did uh, training courses and several young independent Sudanese filmmakers have contributed and will continue to do so. All three museums will show all the films that we've made, which will, most of which will also be available um, publicly. Um, the process inspired Ahmed Lippmann, who's the Washington, was the Washington BBC correspondent, he's now director of uh, Sudan State TV, um, to speak about a historical site in uh, Darfur that was close to his heart. Example of how things can be highlighted. But he's only one of um, many, many, many contributors. And it's together that they represent uh, shared culture. Uh, in the end, uh, astonishingly, we made uh, 53 films. They're all quite short. Um, some of them are from archival material, but the majority were shot last year. Um, this is one. Um, this is from the... Um يمكن يكون من ال 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 التراثات المميزة لأنه نحنا القطع التراثية ب بنستعملها في 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 أنا في وقتها بنستعمل الهبابة بنستعمل الكاس بنستعمل ال ال البخسة بنجيب بها الروب من الريف إلى المدينة وب ب ب ب بنركب الدواب المختلفة ال 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 الحمار السور الحصين بمختلف أنواعه يعني تراثنا نحن ماشيين فيه بالتعامل اليومي ودخلنا نحن لصيقين لصيقين جد بتراثنا إذن المرأة في دارفور وفي كل السودان هي امرأة قوية وامرأة يعني متمكنة اقتصاديا وامرأة متمكنة اجتماعيا وسياسيا ومشركة مشركة في 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 اتخاذ القرار هي اللي بتحرك المجتمع وبتحرك المرحال ايضا من منطقة الى منطقة عشان تحس المواشي والرجال يمشوا بسرعة عشان يصلوا البادية الثانية اذا هي 
عقائد المرأة عموما في دارفور امرأة قوية For the first phase of the project, we managed by um, focusing on the job in hand. However, the ability of the museum staff to think ahead was also part of the project deliverables. So strategy was a recurrent theme in all the workshops and it was part of the kind of practice of uh, group working. And all museums now have five-year plans and uh, two new grants to spend. Uh, we even ran a workshop, <laughs> very brief, just before the revolution started, uh, when large gatherings were in fact banned, uh, and we got special permission to uh, the day before. Um, and uh, I'd like to finish, if we have a minute, with a quick film from the, the running end. I'm still here, sorry. <laughs> uh, the point yeah. is that institutions themselves are part of living culture, not just everything else. Okay, thank you. Thanks very much to Dr. Helen Melanson and to uh, architect Michael Melanson for this um, great presentation. Uh, and I could say that this work was done very much in close uh, collaboration with everybody uh, who was part of the project from the Sudanese government. And I think that uh, we are all proud that this achieved a great success. Thanks also to the leadership of Dr. Iqlal Al-Malik and uh, Ms. Amani Al-Bashir, who managed to actually bring uh, this uh, project to uh, such a level where we could uh, reach out to many people and uh, also engage the community in particular in all uh, the facets of the project, uh, education, um, display design, uh, and even uh, presentation of their uh, living culture within the museum context. Um, I'm also honored to uh, say uh, that uh, Her Excellency, the Minister of Education from Sudan, is actually attending with us the, this meeting. Uh, Dr. Intisar Sughayroun, uh, so I'd like to welcome her. Thank you for your nice uh, message to all of us. Uh, Dr. Intisar is also um, involved um, in the Kordifan archaeological project, but also in the museum text writing uh, team of the Khalifa Museum. Uh, and we are very honored to have you with us uh, and continue supporting this uh, project with us from the government of Sudan. Um, the last uh, presentation will be by uh, my colleague, uh, architect Anwar Sabek, who is the manager of planning and field projects at Ikram Sharjah office, and uh, who worked, of course, uh, together with Helen and uh, the rest of the team, uh, Dr. Iglal and uh, Amani and uh, Michael, to bring this uh, project to uh, a very uh, successful stage. This uh, last presentation, uh, which also focuses on one of the uh, in very interesting parts of the project, uh, including documentation using uh, the latest technologies that we also have at Ikram Sharjah. Anwar. Greetings to all. I'm happy to, to be here with you and happy that I've uh, worked with this project for almost two years in a beautiful country with a rich, rich heritage like Sudan. I would like to thank everyone 
from Ikram and from my Ikram Charge and Ikram Rome and from my international partners and Sudanese partners. This presentation contains two components. The first is a listing of the training courses that we were implemented in the context of the project, where training was an essential and daily component of all project works, and learning was done through implementation. These sessions were run by Ikram international experts and resulted in a local team that was able to follow up with the work and transfer the expertise, thus achieving a kind of sustainability. I will not mention here the workshops that targeted the community or those that were carried out by the authorities professionals without direct intervention from the project international experts, as they were mentioned in the previous presentations. The second part is a video about the documentation and photog photogrammetry that we carried out in the context of the project and a number of the other sites. The first meeting was with the team of the General Authority of the Antiquities and Museums, representatives of the government, institutions, concerns of the heritage, interest people, and volunteers in April 2018, where we had 70 participants. It was an introduction of the project and, and its components and objectives. It was also one of the very few events that brought the NSAMs, NCAMs team coming from all over Sudan in one place. Here we see a workshop training and planning that included project management and follow-up was attended by the group of decision makers and the general authority of integrities and museums and project experts. Then there are two, two workshops in September 18. The first on managing collections preserved in stores was attended by a group of museums, curators and, conserv and conservators, followed immediately by a second workshop on documenting and documentation of museum collections attended by photographers, archivists, and restorers who were also from the first group. The collections management and preservation workshop attended, attended by 17 trainees and lasted for 20 days between September and October. Also, there were two workshops for the subject of building, conservation management, and documentation for historical buildings. Was attended by, art, by architects and by conservators and other people concerned. We were either in the, uh, the and this workshop was the nucleus for the Sudanese conservation team, which was previously mentioned. The number of trainees increased with the progress of the project, who came from various governmental sectors or from volunteers. A workshop was on education and museums was attended by 70 invitees and participants. Most of them were from school teachers. Then we had another training course about preservation and museum collections attended by another 22 participants. Training workshops on museum display design were held in Sharjah, to which the Sudanese authority team and project experts were invited, held in September 2019. And the last training course that took place in Barambo House which was about the restoration of museum collections, was attended by 20 trainees in January 2020. The participants in these training courses were from various disciplines related to cultural heritage, such as school teachers, engineers, architects, journalists, archaeologists, interior designers, artists, technologists, media professionals, sports, and youth. Sudanese national partner had the largest share in the number of trainees, as and CAM's employees formed around 50% of the trainees, and the rest came from other institutions such as universities, government, and private institutions. Now we will see a video that shows documentation and photog photogrammetry that we carried out in the context of Project Al Khalifa House and the defensive fortifications or Tabiat in Umdurman and Khartoum, as well as the gate of the historic Modiria building and its surrounding in Al Obeid building. This product will be used for museum display as well as future conservation and restoration works. It should be noted that some of the trainees have, uh, have acquired knowledge and enough knowledge and skills in the methodology of photo acquisition using the drone. Some of the works in the following film is a product of their of their uh, involvement without any involvement from the trainees. Now we leave you with the video.
This is the Khalifa house. This is the Bramba house, which is from colonial, uh, colonial two-story building, built with bricks and wood. And that is now a community center for activities. This is Uncle Thom, the house, the daughter of the Caliphate. It's a very really beautiful house. It has two yards, backyard and front yard, with a toilet. Top view. This is a video top view showing the whole full house, Khalifa house, and the yards. This is Mudiria Gate house, the scan. This is the site in general. This is the gate house, which is an entrance with a room of watch, of guard watch. had many interventions and many uh, restorations. Here, here you see also, also the fortifications done by Ekrom and the Klaus Fund. Here we see the facades. This is the team with the, with the local community. Shukran Jazilan, uh, thank you very much for all the speakers who have uh, uh, presented excellent uh, PowerPoints and also movies uh, that gave uh, uh, you know, some uh, idea about uh, the, uh, the project and uh, the dimensions that we addressed throughout uh, you know, the project implementation. We are very proud that we will be continuing uh, to support this uh, project and what we have started uh, with the, our Sudanese colleagues uh, through uh, additional support that we received from the British Fund. So thanks again for supporting uh, this project, supporting Sudan and supporting the cultural heritage of uh, Sudan that is rich and uh, deserving to be um, uh, shown and presented uh, elsewhere to the world as also part of the Arab region and Africa. Okay, I think uh, now we will start the uh, question uh, and answer period. I'd like to have uh, the colleagues, uh, the presenters, to open their videos, please, uh, with us, so that uh, I can uh, address the questions that we received. We have probably only less than half an hour to answer many of these questions, so I hope we could um, be short and, um, and also uh, address the uh, the demands coming from the audience. Thank you. Uh, thanks also to the audience who uh, were, were patient with us for a one hour uh, lecture. To give you, I mean, you asked me also to say mm -hmm. a few words. Please go ahead. Yeah. God, peace be upon you, dear colleagues. On behalf of myself. And on behalf of Dr. Hatem, I would like to thank you and give you our deepest appreciation for this project that made a leap, a qualitative leap in our efforts in conservation for our culture. And especially I would like to thank the, the British Cultural Consulate Fund for the support as well as to ICROM, ICROM Sharjah and ICROM International and especially Dr. Wafer Ndoro and his team from Rome. We would like to thank them for their support to Sudan to have this support from the British Fund. Without that Fund, we were not without the support, we would not be able to do this important project, which is the biggest support we've received in our museums. And this project is a pivotal moment in our in our uh, museums ever since our revolution. From from that time to now, we had some uh, security issues. But we, ha we managed to, to go through them together. And we also would like to thank Dr. Zakir Aslan for his fellowship, 
for his uh, close follow up for all of the details of this project and running the workshops and uh, uh, capability building and all other issues as well as the other presentation workshop which was covered by Sharjah Ikram and was well received by all participants. I would like to thank Anwar Sabak, the engineer Anwar Sabak, who helped. Uh, I want to thank him for his patience with us and uh, on the conditions that we had during the project. I would like to thank all the experts, international experts, that participated in, in the uh, in the project, and especially Michael and Helen Melanson. We also would like to thank all the workers and the authorities here for their commitment to bring success to this project. Thanks to everyone who helped here, be it in Sudan, from the University of uh, Khartoum, University of Ahfad, other universities. I would also like to thank the three states, governments, or rulerships that authorities that, that helped us and supported us in these projects. Thank you for the communities, local communities, who were a main pillar in supporting this project and, and its success. I would like to also thank all the Sudanese contractors who helped building these, these uh, projects with a nationalism and patriotism. Uh, point of view instead of a uh, personal or uh, commercial one. I'd like to thank everyone who participated in making these this workshop or this lecture a success and for everyone who participated in this project, Alice, Roberto and the translator Rebecca. And for all those who participated and will participate in the questions and answers. And for those who are putting the questions, and we would be able, I hope you'll be able to answer their questions. Thank you again, and may God reward you for your actions. And also, would like to thank, and it's a must to thank the British Council for funding the second phase of the project, where we'd like to, where we would try to cover the the needs of these museums to be. A museum that are alive, as uh, with capabilities that are uh, similar or comparable to museums from around the world, where they could do their role. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Dr. Iglal Al Malik, for your kind uh, words to all the team members. And in fact, I have to say that the team was also composed. Uh, your teams <laughs> in Sudan, which were pivotal to the success of the work. So the Sudanese uh, group and the Sudanese trainees and the Sudanese professionals and the curators of the museums had a major role actually in the success of this project. Um, I think without any further delay, we don't have much time left. We have probably 15 minutes only. So uh, I'll be uh, selecting the main questions that we received on the question and answer, and I hope that uh, we have succinct answers to these questions so that we can answer as many as we can. So I'd like to ask all the panel to be uh, ready for taking the floor and uh, uh, volunteering to answer uh, the questions depending on their nature. So the first question we received from uh, Ulrike New. Um, uh, no, I think uh, she is asking if there will be a, uh, an access provided to the register of objects in the museums online or on request for researchers. Who can answer this question? I can. Yes, of course, it's a very important aspect, a uh, very important role of the museums to give the opportunity for the for, of the to have the access to the information that, she, that the museums have, and this heritage would have pages. We have websites, we have our own websites, we have and Twitter and Facebook as well, and they could reach us out and we could 
also put these artifacts, this information online, and we are happy to answer and to respond to any researcher for any giving any information. Shukran, Dr. Iglal. I think the next question is for uh, Ms. Amani Al-Bashir. I don't know if she's with us or she can. Sometimes the connectivity is not that strong. The question, if there will be any written article about the project that you have led in Shekan. Yes, thank you, Dr. Zaki, for the question. There will be publication and websites, but not been activated yet. We didn't publish yet in the groups uh, of the of the museum, but there will be a, a website that's activated uh, for the Sheikh Khan Museum where to have all the project experience from the beginning, from its idea inception, all the way to the completion of the project. All of this would be available for anyone who wanted to who wants to, to view it maybe after two months. Great, thank you so much. Uh, there is another question from Karen uh, Wilmsey from the Netherlands. She's uh, saying that I'm very impressed with the project. Thanks a lot for having this opportunity. Having worked in Jabal Marra and uh, Kab Kaburia, I wonder about the possibility of doing similar projects with the Sultan Ali Dinar's museum at his former court at Al Fasher. And are you giving uh, also local terms when explaining the objects? Um, for example, the food uh, covers are uh, in Sudanese Arabic, referred to as tabakh, uh, etc. So this is her question. Who would like to answer this question? Uh, I can answer this question and only in, in, in some brief. The next stage of the work we're doing um, is developing the exhibitions in the Darfur Museum in Niala. But the conversations that we've had with uh, Vali Al Nabi is that the teams that will be trained uh, for the museum in, in, um, in Niala will also help develop exhibitions in Ghanaina and Al Fasha. That's the intention. It's not within our current budget, but it is within the intention of the project to develop all three museums that are currently in Darfur as to be to have similar exhibitions about the culture of Darfur. But you must bear in mind the, the museum, the Nyala Museum is called the Darfur Museum and it is the museum for all Darfur. So just so that it, it is developing exhibitions for the whole region, not just but one museum. What about the different names? Uh, and as for the different names, we are indeed using all the local names and we are consulting with our next stage of our project is to do research with the communities in Darfur, hopefully starting in November, where we'll have local people from Darfur, from Nyala University particularly, uh, with Dr. Jaffa, going around doing research on the collections that we have in the Darfur Museum, what their names are, where they come from, who made them, and, and redisplaying them uh, properly. Thank you. Yes, there is a question if this presentation will be uploaded somewhere later. I would like to say yes, there will be uh, on the YouTube channel and there will be also on Ikram's website. Uh, I'd like to move to another question, which is probably to our Sudanese colleagues. If um, uh, there is a support from the Ministry of Tourism to include these museums into their tourism promotion for better marketing and uh, for the tourists. I could answer this question, but first allow me to add to what Michael mentioned, which is for other works and other uh, museums in Sudan and Darfur, this is part of our strategy that we are following and our authority, which is to attract the support for all museums. We ha now have around 13 museums. Three of them are in Darfur, and the other point is in the coming stage of the project, we have a project that is a survey of an intangible live heritage. Part of it will be documentation of all the uh, all the uh, heritage artifacts. As for the names, I would like to add even more that we are focusing or interested more in what we would call decolonization of heritage. We would like to focus on the decolonization of heritage. So all the works in, in bef before the research were all done by researchers from the West, even our 
own researchers would use terminology used from uh, European terminology. So now we are uh, now we are working hard to have the Arabic names in a proper manner like tabak which is to cover the food so we use the Arabic name tabak and then we could say between two brackets how it is pronounced by local people uh, the question is about if there, if there is a second phase uh, for 3D documentation uh, from uh, inside and outside of the monuments is there another stage another phase yes our plan does have did have uh, to continue a follow-up but now with the international restrictions probably it's hard to, to do so now hopefully in the future we could do so but this is also connected to the museum display plans and the design plans that are done with the project teams in principle Sudanese colleagues Montasar at least they are able to do this in a professional manner from the outside. As from the inside, probably it, it would need some training. We're still working on that. Shukran, Anwar. Thank you, Anwar. I think there's another question about uh, you know the neglect that affected the deterioration of the museums and if there are plans of constructing new community museums. I don't know who will be able to answer this question. If Helen would like okay, to take this I can, I can answer if you want, Zaki. Yeah, sure, please go uh, ahead. Uh, in terms of, of, of further community museums, the community museum idea uh, is obviously an idea that has been evolved by the Sudanese themselves uh, during the workshops that we've been working on. And the large education workshop we had uh, in March last year before the revolution, all 14 museums had representatives at, and all of them wanted to develop community museums in their regional centres. And in fact, at the uh, Port Sudan Museum, a balsam was approached by the local people asking, when are you going to make the Port Sudan Museum into a community museum? So the desire to create the community museums is coming from the communities themselves. And the idea itself is growing in its own momentum within Sudan. Uh, of course, at the same time, there's an interest from outside of Sudan also in the idea of community museums, both from colleagues in Ethiopia and Ghana and Kenya, who already have community museums. And so I think, Part of the project is to see what does community museum mean to different people because it, it is an idea that seems to have its own meaning in its own location and is essentially a, a way of evolving a local narrative about their own history. Um, and I think this idea has caught on and how, where it will go and how, how it will develop is actually what this project is trying to find out. And I think and that is the research aspect of our project. Uh, what was the second one? The second one was about the mud brick work. Um, the bricks actually in the Khalifa House are not brick, not mud brick. But the Khalifa House and the Madeira Gateway in Al Abed are both fired brick, and there is very, li very little mud brick um, because of the very heavy rains, I suspect, um, in, that, in those regions. I mean, at the moment there are floods both in Al Abed and in Khartoum. Um, but there is mud plaster, or was mud plaster used, but we have replaced a large amount of the mud plaster with lime plaster. Um, because with discussion with our colleagues uh, and the architects in Sudan, um, they uh, proposed that the lime plaster was more resistant to termite inf um, invasion than the mud plaster, which tend to encourage invasion. And termites is a major and uh, almost an unsolvable problem, which basically has to be fought at every possible level in terms of the wood, the plaster, the floor, and everything else. Okay. Thank you, Michael. There are actually, we, we only have six minutes left uh, and I'm trying to group the questions together. So there are, there are questions related to the disasters and, uh, and how uh, prepared uh, are we to uh, face uh, disasters in Sudan? And uh, there's another relevant question also related to security of the museums. Uh, I, I, I assume that uh, is related to theft. So I don't know if Dr. Iglal and or Amani can answer this question. Shall I go for it or should you go, Amani? Okay, I'll go for it. Dr. Zaki, as for the as for the preparedness for risks and first aid. 
with ECROM, we have trained many of our workers in other uh, projects, not this project, about uh, first aid for heritage. Also, UNESCO, we had we had another course with UNESCO about the collections, not the buildings. In phase two, one of the maybe most important uh, workshops that could be done for the biggest groups in coordination with you in, in Sudan is regarding this first aid for groups and buildings. Now we have, as you know, the floods and it's still, it is kind of controlled but it's still dangerous and we fear that the levels of the Nile might go even further and here I could use this podium to, to call for all your expertise, expertise or international expertise to help in this regard and we also have here we have uh, the minister Zghairoun which was uh, the, the dean of the uh, at university but and she, now she became the the ministry the minister but she never forgot her her specialization she always were the first to come at scene in these sites and in these international heritage sites. The Royal City, yes, the Royal City. And she was one of the first people to come and to supervise these works, which was done in a traditional manners. And now we are working on activating and promoting the preservation during the floods so we have better materials to work with and give us better and quick uh, responses or quick results. So instead of doing it in 10 hours, you can do it in one hour probably sometimes. So now with ECROM we are trying to put a program, a training program, and maybe we would have it, we would have fundraising for it to support for uh, crisis or for disasters. We have a fund, we, we, we would raise this issue with uh, the council in our next meetings in Rome, hopefully. Thank you, Dr. Ajar. There are two groups of questions we need to answer in, in, uh, quickly, and then we would finish this uh, nice meeting. The first question, the first group of questions is regarding Amani's work, which is regarding the local communities. There, is there any people are being expressing their, their happiness and the community engagement? The question is, what's the biggest segment of community that had uh, interaction? Or that was involved, and also for the local communities, how did they accept, or how did they, how was their reaction or reception for these activities? Thank you, Dr. Zaki. The reception was well received by all community members, uh, and they are very well educated and they, they know the importance of the conservation of the heritage. In Sheikh Khan, for example, it was actually uh, it was actually a fruit of, of, of an idea, of a local idea. So it, there's many participants of, of educated people from the local management. Maybe in the workshops you, you, you saw how the local management councils and how the local families gave their efforts and gave their artifacts that are valuable for them and for their families and for their histories. So the response was brilliant from the local communities, from all the communities, from, uh, was very well uh, represented or it, it was really good responses. The acceptance was very good for the museum and now we started receive, now we receive every day we're having more visitors for those who are interested in museums especially after the project and after the project so light and after the buildings are now showing that they are being restored and they are ready 
we're getting now more citizens, more, more people to give their uh, ideas, to give their suggestions and their help for the project and they are registering their names uh, as volunteers and they also would like to thank everyone who did anything to this project, big project. As for the communities also, the media, the media had a big role in this uh, project, in promoting this project and in highlighting its achievements and in the local acceptance as well. So the governmental, the governmental role also was big in facilitating the project, in facilitating all the procedures and the help and support. So for example, the museums, sometimes we had issues of, of lack of funds or lack of abilities and there were many help uh, through this fund which is very helpful for us. Thank you very much, Mr. Manil Bashir. I think the last group of questions, re, in fact, are related to the uh, to the database and its integration with the with the systems and also the access uh, to these um, uh, documentation efforts of the of the collections. Uh, I don't know if anybody can uh, answer this question, Helen. Our sister um, project is called Sudan uh, Memory. And they, their whole project, in fact, is about databases. So they've been incredibly helpful on helping us um, set up the digital side of the recording process. Um, I think there's a, a couple more stages we need to go through over the next uh, months uh, in terms of the digitizing program, but certainly some things will be available through the Sudan Memory Program. So all of our photography and recording techniques are lined up with Sudan Memory um, program. So some will be able to transition straight across. And the idea is that we will, they will have a kind of core um, online catalog for the museums. Um, how much the museums want to have or how much NCAM wants to have online and publicly available and how much they will just have um, in their own digital records has not been uh, finalized yet. Uh, we're not quite there, but the technology will be in place for them to do it properly. Um, it, everything just takes time in Sudan. <laughs> sure. Well, with this, uh, I think it's unfortunate that we could not address each question uh, separately. I tried to group the last questions together and uh, I hope you could, uh, for those who, who we did not answer the questions, uh, uh, maybe they can uh, reach uh, out to us, uh, send us an email on the ICROM uh, address, and we will be able to um, uh, send you the answers with our uh, partners in the project. Again, I'd like to uh, thank everybody for attending, and I'd like uh, mostly to thank the uh, panel members and the panelists who uh, presented um, very interesting and very um, good presentations to give an idea about how um, efforts were made to make this project a reality. And of course, it's the beginning, as Helen mentioned, so there's a, a long way to go. And we're very thankful that um, the British Fund has continued to support this project and supporting Sudan. Um, uh, Robin Davis, who was with us, but also I think Victoria, Vicky is uh, also with us. So also special thanks go to them for supporting our work at ICROM with our member states, in this case Sudan. And I believe this project is a good example to spread out um, in uh, the African continent. And I think this uh, community dimension was very important to the success of our work. Thank you very much again, and I hope uh, to see you uh, next time. We at ICROM actually have the lecture series, and I'm sure you will be following us um, to see our next uh, series. Uh, and uh, thanks again to everyone. Thank you.